today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the first floor and the basement. Now, some of you might remember what that basement looked like before. The access to the basement used to be just here. Now, what we did, we, we thought, well, actually having a doorway onto this hallway, yeah, we just didn't really like that. So we thought if we created, I don't know really what you'd call this space. It's like a little hallway on a hallway. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to have that toilet kind of separate to the kitchen. Because if you think, if you went to the toilet, and the access to it was here. You're still kind of in the kitchen and I don't really like that. The plus with creating a massive house is it's very wow. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm over the moon with how this has turned out. The only downside is bigger a house is, the more expensive it is. But in an area like where I live now, where square meter is everything. You see people doing three basements down and they become iceberg homes. I'll put a plan on the screen or something that I saw not too long ago. I call it London developed. It doesn't make sense anywhere else. Like I would argue loft conversions, which if you can remember, done a main loft and then a pod loft. It doesn't make sense to do that in some areas because you're not going to see the value back by adding that square meter. So you've got to do all your due diligence. You've got to do all your research into it. But in London, loft conversions, they're worth their weight in gold in some cases. Like I said, you've got to run the numbers. In this case, yeah, it was a no brainer. The amount of value we've added to this house is unbelievable. Anyway, with the basement, as you can see, gray staircase. Uh, this is actually a brand new staircase that we had made. So as you can see, the first thing you notice is head height. I can walk in here completely easy obviously i can touch the ceiling but yeah it's it's insane for a basement in london it's a little bit ridiculous actually like this is fake marble um because it's just to cover a little cupboard in the basement i'm not going to spend loads of money making the basement look unbelievable in fact these were some leftover floor tiles that we had the next thing you might notice is we added a little curve here to just give a little bit more head height i mean you don't need to but we just thought it'd make it look a little bit nicer and then you got your washing machine and then you can put a dryer on top and there's still room there that's my lawnmower which is just one of those push ones i was looking at getting a robot one but they're really expensive really happy with how this basement's turned out there was a bit of area we needed to fill so this is just skirting board put on its side and this is just a strip of architrave from around a door it just kind of makes it look a bit more finished this was quite a lot of thinking getting this led strip here we've got three four and then a spotlight just outside so you get a ton of light but because it's kind of got like corbelled bricks behind this plasterboard we thought if we batten it out we could make a little rectangle it doesn't affect your walking because there's enough space it's just another continuous led strip running the full length it just kind of adds like a really cool effect to just a boring basement. I'll put some photos on the screen now so you can see what it looked like before. And one more thing that is really important about this basement is it's all been tanked perfectly. Like there's no smell of damp. So if I put some clips on the screen, you might remember this looks, well, awful. And we stripped it completely back. It's all been plasterboarded, plastered. And then the staircase itself, I have spent hours sanding because every single one of these I've had to sand and then on here, because I stupidly didn't protect it, I was hitting it with wheelbarrows and I basically did reconstructive surgery on it, filled it all in and yeah, it's the original staircase and it looks brand new. Do you think a runner might look nicer, but I'm very happy with this. Put a photo on the screen of what this used to look like. That was that crap toilet going through there. Obviously, stud wall created this entire space. So as you walk in, this is, yeah, it's a massive, massive double bedroom um for london anyway this is massive got the original big window got a new radiator there side tables stole from a friend's house and the bed is just a cheap bed then you've got your underfloor heating two light switches because in here if i just show you we put pebbles down on the flat roof to make it look a little bit nicer very very happy with how it's turned out so obviously you've got your your rainy fally shower head, these little recesses that we use all the time, which we construct ourselves. I think I've done an Instagram video where I talk about the, like, the little niche and how you stud wall it out. Then it's all tile backerboard, waterproofing the tile backerboard, putting that rubber stuff around the shower tray, uh, making sure the shower tray is actually level so the water flows down. It's quite easy for me to just point the camera and be like, yeah, this is the bathroom. But the reality is this is hours and hours of work, evenings, crying, really, because it is horrific doing this stuff. But 
it is also the best thing you'll ever do because the money saved. I was gonna say, I hate to think how much this renovation would cost, but if you'll remember, we actually started getting quotes from people to do the whole job because we were like, nah, maybe on this one, we get some more people in. No. Someone quoted half a mil for the ground floor. The, what, the kitchen that I was showing you, half a million. I know people can quote anything, but the other quotes were like 300,000, then there was one for 200,000, then 150,000, then 80,000. 80,000 also wasn't including anything. Like that was a ridiculous quote, but it's just the quotes were ridiculous and they seem to keep getting even more ridiculous. And this is the only way it's possible to do it is by doing everything yourself. As I said, I've done no course in anything. My brother and me have taught ourselves everything and hopefully this inspires you to go, oh, I can actually do it. So like all of this is mitered corners, which if you don't know what mitered corners are, basically means I've got to shave off diagonals on the tiles so they meet up all nicely, because otherwise you'd have a really fat gap between the two. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but I don't have any of the tools. Like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, neither did I. You've got to spend money to make money. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got to, at one point, take the risk, okay? And tiling to me is the one that you do. For us electrics, you get someone else to do that. Plumbing, you get someone else to do that. Plastering, you can do it yourself, but when there's this amount of stuff, you need to spend your time doing the other bits. You won't believe how much, just time is spent cleaning stuff and like carrying crap to the tip. Everything is very small jobs, but there's thousands of them. And with tiling, I worked out that, say on that ensuite alone, I could buy all the tools to do it, so that's a tile cutter, a little spinny, what do you call it, with then a diamond blade on it, and that does your, your nice cuts. And then like a circle drill to drill through the tiles. I could buy all of the tools to do it. All of the materials in the bathroom, everything in there, so the tiles, the grout, the tile adhesive, the tile backer board, the silicon, toilet, flush, fake marble that goes on the top of it, the sinks, the taps, the shower heads. I could buy it all three or four times I could carry it to the top floor of the house, drop it out of the window, smash it, before it comes to the same price as getting someone else in to do it. And also the amount of time that takes to do, it's not much time. A bathroom like that, like a day, two days, it's not hard. You're essentially measuring, cutting, and then yeah, you need a laser level to basically run a line around the whole room. You don't have to, it's just, well, I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm saying with the laser level is if you look, that line runs all the way along there, runs all the way along there, meets with that line, meets with this line, meets with that line, that then runs all the way along to that line, and it goes there. And then grouting is so unbelievably easy, because you get a little roller thing to scrape it all out. It starts to dry, and then before that, you're just pushing it all in. It's really not that difficult. The thing I didn't plan is for that grout line to end up perfectly in the center of the tap, and then, then follow with that and then that follows with that. If I tried to do that, that wouldn't happen. But it's a really nice mirror, like that. It's got a shaving point on it as well. Uh, the fan is there. And then we've got a blind system because I don't want your neighbors looking in. Then we've got a little radiator here, underfloor heating, as I mentioned. Got quite a nice flusher thing there. Again, cutting this was good fun. Sanding it down, making it all look nice. The plasters did a really good job making this swan neck, I think it's called. Um, if you wonder ever how you do that, it's basically batten and then a type of wire. It's basically chicken wire. And here it was a bit of a mess. So I reconstructed this whole thing. That's a bit of batten. And then I just used a ton of filler, much like I did on here, because this bit, this entire section on the side there didn't even exist. Now you might remember, the loft conversion, got two lofts up there. And this was just a normal pine staircase. And as you can see, it's a very different um, style. Like this is, I think, mahogany. So we just stained the pine, the same color. And obviously it's a different style handrail. The vision from the moment we viewed the house when it was for sale, there was this complete waste of space from about here where the handrail did originally finish. It was about, it was literally there, the handrail finished. Remember everything from this point on, we created and with the vision that we're like, oh, okay, this has got a huge floor plan. That loft looks bloody big. I think we can do quite a lot to this house. And then we looked at neighboring houses, what well, they'd got permission for, and that's how we made the decision to buy it. And I'll, I'll do a video on why we bought this house and everything. When we were viewing it, there was this wasted space where they had like an armchair. I'll try and find a photo and put it on. And then the smallest little room ever. It didn't make any sense. But we thought, why don't we just pull the wall out, utilize all that space, 
and create massive shower. So obviously here, you've got your underfloor heating system, you've got two light switches, you've got spotlights, and then you've got recess light. Now this is a 1.4 meter shower tray. I think you could get exercise walking in the shower tray. It is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. And when it's that length, you don't need a shower screen, which is rich. Then my brother said, oh, shall we do coving in this room? It's just made it so posh. Like it's so unnecessary, but now it's necessary because it's done. So yeah, over the moon with this bathroom, you got a really nice little sink. Again, you've got the same mirror with the little lighty lights. Then you've got a shaving point on the side there. And then nice big radiator, toilet obviously. In terms of things almost going very wrong, yeah, especially that bit. Gloss porcelainose tiles on the wall and then satin ones on the floor because that makes it less uh, slippage -ness. Then a bath, very, very almost didn't have enough space for this. You see there, you've got literally like a centimeter that side, maybe a centimeter that side. What else can I tell you? Oh yeah, for the upstands around the bath, we've just done, yeah, the normal, normal tiling. So this is my brother's old room. Stole these from another friend. Just got some nice little lights. But yeah, this room was my old bedroom and it's basically used as my brother's girlfriend's office. If you're wondering, big double bedroom, big double bedroom, shared bathroom. And then you've got another big double bedroom with an ensuite. So the balance of bathrooms is pretty sick because if you remember, originally there was just one tiny shower room sharing these bedrooms. So next video, the finished loft conversion. Hey.